Friends in Christ, did you have a good Christmas? It's the 11th day of Christmas today, but most of the giving and receiving of gifts, I think, is past. A lot of people have taken their decorations down already. The song, The 12 Days of Christmas, it's old-fashioned gift suggestions, would say that today, the 11th day of Christmas, is the day for 11 pipers piping. Although you find different versions of the songs, they mix it up a bit, and some would have 11 lords a-leaping for today. I don't know that anyone is giving or receiving flutes, flute playing or dancing for today, but maybe you've received a gift from your true love on one of those days of Christmas, if you have someone that you would call a true love. Maybe you're old enough now that you don't get your hopes up for a very specific gift that you would want and your hopes and dreams and joy depends on hopefully getting that gift. Maybe you're old enough now, like I feel myself, that you can buy yourself something if you want it. If you want an electronic gadget or a really cool new coat, you can just buy it. But think of something that you could never afford to get yourself. Something that would be so amazing that it could make your life so much better than it is now. Is there something? There must be something. Or maybe it's better to think back to a time when you really, really, really wanted something for Christmas when you were a child. You didn't have any way of getting it. Did you watch one of the 12 times that it was shown a Christmas story on Christmas? Ralphie, BB gun, what he wanted that's become a cliche now, a Red Ryder BB gun. But you know what your parents would say if you asked for that? You'll shoot your eye out. When I was little, my parents used to say, only half jokingly, if something cost more than $10 or ran on batteries, it was junk and you didn't want it anyway. So we kind of bought into that, I guess, a little bit. But there's a little bit of Ralphie, maybe, a little bit of still hope for something that would be given to us? What if you weren't Ralphie, but you were Solomon? Without, ask, God, without you even asking God, and not Santa Claus or your earthly parents, but your heavenly Father came to you and offered to give you whatever you wanted, not just for Christmas, but for life. Well, that's the story we have. Solomon, this great model in asking for wisdom. He recognized who he was, the position that God had put him in. David, his great father, king, and Solomon was now to carry on. And he said, I can't do this on my own, God. I need wisdom. I need you to guide me. If you look in the original Hebrew text, it's fascinating because it's actually past tense that God said, I've already given you wisdom. So God already had given him what he was looking for. And maybe he was looking for an affirmation that what he thought was wisdom from God really was. So God even brings up all the things that Solomon could have asked for but didn't. And he seems to reward this godly spirit of Solomon. So he gives him also riches and wealth and fame, power, all this stuff. And we could end the story here maybe in some way and say the moral of the story is to be humble, ask for something in humility, be smart, be thankful to God. Amen. But we know that Solomon's story goes on after that. Because Solomon would be the hero of this story and not God if Solomon was just the smart guy who asked for something good. No, Solomon was so smart that he ended up getting himself into all kinds of trouble. Too many wives, more than one is too many, but all the trappings of being rich. So he messed up God's kingdom over, over over the course of time and his son split the kingdom of Israel in two and it was never really quite the same again. Smart Solomon. I think the deeper 
meaning that comes out is even when we have the grace to ask for something great from God, we still find a way to get it caught up in our sinful world and in our lives. We can take a perfect gift and wreck it. So God could warn us that if he gives us what we want, we'll shoot our eye out. And so he could say, I'm never giving you that. But so often he does give us what we ask for, even knowing that we might cause ourselves or others harm or injury because of our sinfulness and our sinful world. The damage that we will do is already known to God. But miracle of miracles, he gives us his good gifts. That allows us to see his wisdom in guiding us to use those gifts in better ways. Solomon was the wisest, the richest of kings that we've known, but he wasn't the king that was needed. Because God gave the promise of the only king who could give us what we need and not just what we want. It's the Savior Jesus who came to be the king who would be that perfect gift that the world would strike down and destroy because it didn't know what to do with such a great gift. But the Savior Jesus who came to bring forgiveness, peace, hope, all those things we talk about at Christmas because those gifts are not just for a few days at Christmas when everyone's feeling nostalgic and kind-hearted with the Christmas spirit. Those gifts are for all of life and forever. They're for dark, difficult days of January when we're trying to get it going again in a new year. They're for days when we get difficult news. It's for every day that God comes to us and says, I know what you want. I know what you need. And somehow I'll tie those two together in the gift that I'm going to give you, the gift that I've already given you, a Savior. So as we end this Christmas season, remember that on this, the 11th day of Christmas, and on every day, your true love, God, gives you a great gift. He's giving you his love and eternal life in Jesus. Amen. We have the gift of caring for each other also, as we do often in prayer. Let's stand together as God's people and pray. <clears throat> Dear God, our Father, we thank you for the gift of life, the gift of eternal life, for the gift of our Savior Jesus and the faith which, which grabs onto him as our hope. Lord, in all the circumstances of life, we pray and lift up to you the difficulties that people face. We pray for a family friend of Scott Machen from housekeeping. Scott's friend has end-stage cancer and just a few months to live. Gracious Father, we pray that there would be the best of medical care for him, that there would be freedom from pain, that you would bless those days he has in this life, that you would give him strong faith and comfort in your love unto life's end. Lord, we pray for... for a number of families who have lost loved ones. We lift up Jill Kepke from Student Life and her family. Her father-in-law passed away. We pray for Dave Enters from Counseling and his family as his mother-in-law passed away after a long life of faith. We pray for the family of Shirley Kraft, longtime friend and donor of CUWAA. She died just before Christmas. Gracious Father, for these families, for all who mourn, we pray a peace that passes understanding, that you watch over them, that you remind them of your care and of your love, and that you remind of the promise that all who trust in Jesus indeed live forever. Lord, bless us as we uh, are in Winterham now. For those here who are serving faithfully for our athletic teams as they're um, 
as they're practicing and, and getting ready to compete in, in many things over the next weeks. Lord, bless us all. Give us that strength and energy and help, health to serve you. These and all things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We go with God's blessing. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.